Like a trio of dancers, these machines grind away at artificial knees, testing for defects at this center dedicated to artificial joint research. So this is an implant that slowly wore away the plastic. Of all the hip and knee replacements Dr. Thomas Turgeon does, one in six are either removals or repairs called revision surgery. So this is a, a knee replacement problem. Only occasionally is it due to infection or some kind of premature failure. With an aging population, he expects re-replacements will be routine. They have a limited life expectancy, so some of them will go on to fail, and as we're doing more and more of them, we'll expect that number to climb. Artificial hips are among the most common removals, along with pacemakers, cochlear implants, breast implants, and pelvic mesh. Our research has found more than 7,800 patients have had an implant revision or removal in the last 10 years. But some implants were never supposed to come out. Your gynecologist tells me that there's nothing she can do for me. I'm going to have to live with this for the rest of my life. Natasha Roach had a pelvic mesh put in last year to treat urinary incontinence. The symptoms began almost immediately. The constant pain and the pulling, pinching, it, it's like glass, it feels like glass that, that constantly gnaws at your personal area. And she's convinced the device has caused severe infections. But removing mesh can be a complex subspecialty if the mesh is deeply embedded. The same goes for the contraceptive coils called Escher. Often the only expertise is in the U.S. and Roach can't get a Canadian doctor to sign off on getting her treated there. We frequently get told it's in our head. Um, you frequently get told you're making up stories. It's unknown how many Canadian women are paying out of pocket for procedures in the U.S. This surgeon in St. Louis developed special surgical tools for mesh removal. He's operated on more than 20 Canadians. What makes it difficult, quite honestly, is the fact that it wraps around bony structures. It's a boomerang effect with with the mesh, it wraps around the descending pubic ramus, it wraps around ligaments deep in the pelvis, and that makes it very, very challenging. And this is why mangled mesh embedded in human scar tissue. Thank you. And the price of removal is also challenging for Natasha Roach. We have nothing left financially for me to pay for the surgery. And Vic joins us now. That's a pretty crushing sentence, nothing left to pay for surgery. What sort of help is actually available, though, for people who can only get this in the U.S.? Well, provinces do have financial assistance programs in place, but it's not automatic, even with a doctor signing off on it. We checked with a few provinces for just mesh, and since 2011, Ontario received 21 applications for removals and denied five. Alberta received just three and denied one, and B.C. received four and denied two. And the reason for those low numbers is that a lot of women can't wait for the process and just pay out of pocket to get it done, sometimes remortgaging, or maxing out credit lines. Uh, for example, we spoke to a woman in Grand Falls, Windsor, Newfoundland, who did just that. She didn't have mesh, but rather a pair of those contraceptive coils, Escher, and they were embedded in her fallopian tubes. In September, she went to Texas and had them removed, and she spent $18,000, all her money. Her life savings is now gone. Wow. So, okay, so they're expensive. These are complicated surgeries, as you said. What are the outcomes like? Well, they are complicated, and even after paying all that money, there are no guarantees. For Mesh and Escher, sometimes the surgery is complicated further because of earlier attempts to remove those devices, and that can break them up or push them farther in. For example, when that woman from Newfoundland woke up from her removal surgery in September, she learned that the surgeon also had to take out her fallopian tubes, cervix, and uterus, along with those Escher coils, because they'd gone through the walls of her uterus. So it's a devastating price to pay. Wow. Okay, Vic, thanks very much. Uh, really important work. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, because there is no official way for Canadians to search for information on medical devices, CBC News has created a database using data obtained from Health Canada so you can now look up specific information that's relevant to you. Since it launched on Sunday, there have been already been more than 25,000 different searches. You can check it out for yourself online. Just go to cbcnews.ca slash medical devices.